I'm gonna throw another link in chat. This was under the uh, the Proud Boys thing above. We're gonna 1.5 this, but this gives you kind of like an overview of the day as like the, uh, for basically what the Proud Boys were involved in and it walks through kind of how they were like leading the charger and everything. Here's this, let me know when you got this open and then 1.5 and I don't think we'll watch the whole thing. I'll stop it at some point, but. Ready. Ready. Okay, uh, the guy on screen right now is Joe Biggs, uh, who I destroyed in a debate in 2016. So, okay, okay. ready? Three, two, Man, one. Go. Humble. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Joe Biggs, and guess what? You're seeing a Proud Boys leader announcing plans for January 6th. Except this time, and you know who it is when I say we, but this time we're not going to be wearing the colors that you're used to seeing us in. Nope. This time, myself and other leadership have decided we're going to go incognito. We're going to be blending in, weaving in and out like a old lady with some pins in her hand, making a sweater. You ain't going to know who the fuck it is standing beside you. It could be Antifa. It could be me. Joe Biggs is one of five Proud Boys now charged with sedition for their roles on January 6th. I guess they found out who he was. The group was yeah. among hundreds of rioters who stormed the Capitol that day. But you wouldn't really know it from the footage. Because, just as Biggs outlined, they deliberately tried to blend in with the crowd. But building on the work of online researchers, the New York Times spent months finding Proud Boys in videos of January 6th. Our analysis shows, for the first time, how central they were to the Capitol attack. We'll reveal how again and again they instigated critical breakthroughs around the Capitol by repeating the same tactics. Target an access point. Rile up the crowd. Join the violence and reassess if police resist them. We combed through dozens of court records that included thousands of their text messages that show how Proud Boy leaders crafted a chain of command specifically for January 6th. Our investigation traces how an organized and violent group with a history of supporting Donald Trump came to his aid as he desperately tried to cling to power. This is exactly what was did. And were catalysts in a vicious attack on American democracy. Beat after me. I am a Western chauvinist. This is Enrique Tarrio, leader of the Proud Boys. I refuse to apologize for creating the modern world. The group is notorious for street brawling and facing off against far left activists known as Antifa. Wait, fuck, we don't have to watch all this bullshit. Fuck. Um, they run through some of the summer things they do for the, um, the response on parlor and stuff. Uh, I think the only interesting moments we're seeing on video them, um, like the initial break ins. Here, hold on. Um, I should timestamp this better. I'm going to give you a different timestamp right here. Let me know once you've clicked this. Got it. And Sam's will talk. Got it. Got it. Okay, let me know when you're ready. Three, two, one, go. ...to Joe Biggs and immediately confronts the police. Biggs and other leaders look on. Samso later told the FBI that Biggs encouraged him to confront the police, something Biggs denies. As the crowd pushes forward, many of the Proud Boys join in. They start removing barricades. Uh, this is that the and very first on. initial break-in, uh, like through the restricted grounds. A chain reaction has been set off. The attack on the Capitol has begun and Proud Boys lead the charge, removing more barricades at the next police line. They scuffle with officers and break through the line again. The crowd sweeps the West Plaza. For the next hour or so, police will try to hold off these rioters, including Proud Boys, from storming the building. Proud Boys make up a significant portion of the front line here. The Times spent months analyzing the scene to locate them, and there are likely more than we found. Many work as teams, like this group in tactical gear, and these marked with orange. But to blend in, most Proud Boys are deliberately dressed in plain clothes instead of their signature black and yellow. Um, and then there's another part in here that shows like when they finally break through the window. We don't have to watch this, I guess. Um, we don't need like every fucking part in here. Oh, here, just this other part. Then you can see them coming in too. So you just, you see that they're like, they're involved in the initial breach on the outside. And I think they're involved in the initial breach. Uh, not, I think they are. They're involved in the initial breach in the Capitol as well. Um, that 113, let me know you got this open. You click and I think you can see them break into the window here. Let me know when you're ready. Got it. Ready. Yep. Three, ready, ready. two, one, go. This is exactly what was feared. Proud Boy Dominic Pozzola is one of the first rioters to breach the building. And just as he does throughout the day, Biggs follows just a minute behind. At this point, the Proud Boys have been critical players in five major advances. Um, okay, so stop here. Just as a heads up, okay, so this, okay, don't, if you'd learn any fucking thing from today, 
this is the very first time anybody gets into the building. There were no magnetic doors unlocked. There were no more cops letting anybody in. There, none of that other bullshit. None of that is true. This is the very first time that people get into the Capitol building. Okay, this is the first time. It's when they break the window and then they come through the door in the window here. Um, okay, um, that's just that video just showing their role in this. Um, there's like f minor information. Ashley Babbitt was the lady that got shot. Um, she was the only person fatally wounded on January 6th. She was an avid believer in a multitude of conservative conspiracies, including QAnon and other conspiracies relating to Epstein and Satan worshiping, uh, posting videos on her Facebook account, angrily ranting into the camera. Her Twitter feed was full of conspiratorial theories, uh, retweets, I'm sorry, from well-known faces in the MAGA community in the days leading up to her death after attempting to climb through a broken window during the insurrection. Um, I feel like if you go through her Twitter feed, I think it's pretty sad. She's like retweeting and like basically every single fucking thing <laughs> that is like a crazy conspiracy theory. Uh, you can see her retweeting and going through all of this uh, leading up to her going to the fucking um, January 6th event. Um, I think um, yeah, go ahead. when you present this, you mm -hmm. should leave Epstein out of it, I think, because um, I think the problem with that is like when you hear the name Epstein, you say it's a conspiracy theory. Like obviously there are like, you know, invalid conspiracies behind it. But regardless of that, like... The fact is, like, Epstein did fuck kids on an island, and, like, some politicians had been there. And even if, okay, let's say hypothetically that's not true um, in some world, okay? Let's say alternate theory, that's not true. Um, I think when people see Jeffrey Epstein, they read that as, like, a conspiracy that's, like, invalid. Just because of how widespread that is, and, like, it's much bigger than January 6th stuff, I think uh, people mm -hmm. are going to automatically be turned off and be like, you are retarded. Like, yeah, that's fair. I yeah, think okay. I'm into Epstein stuff. Like, you could just literally take out that like one name, and I think it would help this. Sure, possibly. Okay, yeah, I'll put that out in there. Um, there's another guy called Ray Epps. I didn't want to dive into this. People say that he's a guy that like instigated everything because there's a video of this guy the day before, like outside, be like, "We need to go inside the Capitol." Um, but it's so ridiculous. Like, I've done debates with a guy that wrote the article on this. I think it's ridiculous. Um, I, I, I don't have this here. Uh, other people claim there's like embedded intelligence, but. It's hard to even debunk this because, again, there's, like, no good evidence, like, offered up here that intelligence caused, like, there, like it was a Fed surrection or the Feds caused any of this. Um, there's this talking point of, like, the police let them in. Um, the first insurrectionists are the Proud Boys, and they are on video breaking into the building. There's plenty of video footage of police fighting with protesters to debunk this baseless, baseless conspiracy. There's, we don't have to watch all these videos. There's tons of videos of, like, officers, uh, an officer guy getting almost crushed when they're trying to break in. You've got officers getting grabbed and thrown out of lines who gets tased. Uh, you've got footage of officers just fighting with rioters. There's a guy who, like, gets his eyes gouged out by some dude that they're trying to sentence, like, 17 years in prison. Like, not gouged out, I'm sorry. His eyes gouged out. I don't think he lost an eye, but, um, yeah. Um... But yeah, Epps, I feel like it might be go worth going a little more in depth on him because, um, like obviously, mm -hmm. you're saying like, there's a singular video, there's no evidence, many assert conspiracy theories. Like I think it's worth at least like sh picking the video out, going through it. I do it, feel like least. you're if opening you're up this so much. You're you're opening up getting caught in the mud here with like this part of this conversation. I feel like. Yeah, I don't know if I'd include it. I just I have these as notes here, but like some people want to make these really big deals. So I don't know if I would include anything about it or not. I just have like little things here about it. I don't know if I would actually bring them up at all. I'm not sure. Um, I think if you're going to include it, you got to like go into like how the conspiracy is retarded if it is, you know. It's, yeah, maybe. It's yeah. The only problem off topic a lot. Yeah. The only issue is that like if I don't mention anything, people are going to say like, oh, there's a reason why he didn't mention Ray Epps because it sinks this entire story because there's a video of a man right. outside shouting, go into the Capitol. But maybe it's worth including. Maybe that'd be like for the five hour video. Who knows? <laughs> Um, if you're gonna, I, th I just think if you're gonna include him at all, you have to like actively debunk it rather than say like there's a video, everything's retarded, right? But, sure. But if you're, you're, if no you're willing longer... to debunk everything else, you got to go on that. Sure. But the only thing is, you're like you're no longer talking about Trump then, or like this whole thing. You're now going into debunking the January 6 conspiracy stuff. You know. Yeah, but I mean, it's, some of it's worth talking about. Maybe the Ray Epps guy is a guy that gets brought up a ton, but yeah. Um, for motivations of the rioters, there are a plethora of media reports, social media posts, and court documents that show that many of the rioters there on January 6th claim to have been directly inspired by Trump to be there. Um, there's a Citizens for Ethics reports that there's like a ton of different statements made by rioters. I, like you can click that if you want. Like a lot of these people are saying like I went there because I thought that Trump called all patriots. He wanted us to go. Like I thought that Trump, you know, wanted us to be there. Of course I went there. There's a video compilation of rioters uh, that talk about like why they felt like they needed to be there. Um, in the Dominion lawsuit versus Fox News, I peel out a quote here from Rupert Murdoch, who's the huge, you know, Jew owner guy. I think he's Jewish. He's probably Jewish of like Fox News that everybody talks about. Um, in one of his emails, he says, uh, not um, wait, hold on. I think this is all his email. Not surprisingly, given these trends, the head of the Fox News decision desk correctly predicted that on election night, we may be looking at a state 
or at states where it seems that President Trump is in the lead, but there's still 20 or 30 percent of the vote outstanding. So we're not going to be able to make the call in those states. Uh, he correctly recognized and Fox widely and repeatedly reported before the election that this would occur because President Trump had criticized mail-in voting and encouraged Republicans to vote in person, whereas Democrats had encouraged their supporters to vote by mail. Um, no, wait. This isn't a good one. Oh, no, I understand why I have this in here. Sorry. Um, in fact, Maria um, Bartiromo, Bartiromo, I suck at it, discussed this very phenomenon with President Trump in an October 11th, 2020 interview with President Trump lamenting that mail-in votes would likely be counted two weeks after the vote comes in and stating that the Republicans are going out to vote. Um, they don't want to do the mail-in ballot thing. They don't trust it. Republicans are going out to vote. Never mind. I don't know why I have this quote here. This is not the one I'm supposed to have here. Don't worry about that. Forgot I said that. Um, and then the final part is just outcome. It's just like deaths. Um, I've got a section on people that try to rewrite it. There's a lot of people who tweet that like, oh, like, um, you know, this was just a, you know, a protest, like nothing bad happened. It wasn't even that big of a deal. But then when you look at like their coverage on like the day of, it's some of the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. Um, there's a, I guess we can just watch like part of one video. Um, I'm sure I, you guys are probably all familiar with, um, like people saying that it was just like a protest and it wasn't a big deal, I imagine. Right. Yeah. We have okay. produced yeah, a I limited edition that card that is yeah, a piece of If you of want, um, here, with click this link. Small piece of 24 this will be the last thing that we watch any part of. And very, very popular as a memento that you have funded. Band out video based. Oh, dude, Alex Jones. The goat. Um, oh, can't speed this one up. Really? Oh, you can. If you click the timer. The timer, wow. 1.5. It's yeah. just different. Click the little clock. Oh. Do 1.5. I'm at 56.03, and then we can watch this for like five or ten minutes. Oh, well, I gotta so. verify I'm a human. You're okay, good. No good. problem. Yeah. I got a fucking ad. Well, <laughs> I did too. But I went to... Nice job. Oh, wait. I sped up the ad on accident. I'm retarded. <laughs> nice job. I thought I was on the video. Dip shit. Dude, I got the penis pill ad. Let's keep going. Let's go. 56.03 uh, is the timestamp. I'm at 56.03, yeah. I'm ready. All right. Uh, good. Um, I'm ready. There are going to be a whole section on this, but like the way that people cover this event, in my opinion, when they thought they were going to win, is wildly different than how they recounted afterwards. But okay, we're at 56.03. Um, we're going to start in three. Oh, you get out set to one point time. 1.5. Okay. Three, two, one, go. I love this guy. And so today we march to the Capitol because on this historic January 6, 2021, we have to let our congressmen and women know, and we have to let Mike Pence know, they stole the election, we know they stole it, we're not going to accept it, do the right thing, because there's a million of us here in D.C. telling you to, and you have a constitutional and legal, you have to do it, it's your duty, it's your duty to save this election from being stolen. So hey, let's do it. This is a live feed from Washington, D.C. Right now, Alex Jones and Onshore speaking to a large crowd at the same time in the Capitol building. The word is Mike Pence has rejected Trump's call. He has failed to show the courage that Donald Trump was attempting to imbue in him and has begun the counting of the electoral votes. Uh, at the same time, there's word that uh, thousands of patriots have broken through uh, the barriers around the Capitol and are now moving towards it to occupy. That's the word from Elijah Schaefer, who's on the ground. Uh, and Alex Jones continues to uh, speak to this crowd. Let's go back to Alex Jones. And the Great Awakening. The Great Reset is triggering the Great Awakening. And the Great Awakening will trigger the Great Rebellion and the destruction of the New World Order. <laughs> we all know that our system has been corrupt for a long time. The whole world knows our system has been corrupt for a long time. And they've been waiting And then if you want, we can pause this because this... You I watched this entire thing. This is a this video is wild. It just what they say when they think they're going to win is just crazy. These are just like quotes that I peeled out, and I've time stamped it all. If you ever want to go there on your own and look at it, but like um, sixty one forty, it looks like patriots are threatening to overwhelm the security of the Capitol and break in sixty nine forty eight. And here you see them pulling the barriers and police struggling to pull it back. This is not Black Lives Matter, folks. This is not Antifa. These are patriots, and perhaps they finally boiled over. 70 minutes, you see the air filled with the mist of mace, the stinging gas that the police will be implementing, and that is also being implemented against the police as patriots. Wow, receiving blows to the head from billy clubs. We expect the situation to become ever more dire. Um, at an hour, 
120 minutes. I think this would be two hours, 38 seconds. The revolution will be televised. Uh, Elijah Schaefer tweeting, breaking, I am inside Nancy Pelosi's office with the thousands of revolutionaries who have stormed the building. To put it in perspective how quickly staff evacuated, emails are still on the screen alongside a federal alert warning members of the current revolution, right? Note the words. He says this a lot. They're patriots. They're revolutionaries. It's 1776. It's right. Um, We've tried to work within the system, but now the revolution upon which our country was founded is not dead yet. Um, yeah, is he actually is, in the building? I didn't even know that. Elijah, Elijah Schaefer? Schaefer was uh, I think, yeah, well, yeah, I guess if he's tweeting that, yeah, he must have been. I don't think Alaska was. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, there's a picture of baked on Nancy's phone, but. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, that's going to make a good ending. damn it. Yeah, there's just uh, like the video of like people covering this was just wild. Even the meme of that late uh, the lady who got maced. There's like meme videos made of her, but she's literally saying like, "We're storming the Capitol. It's a revolution." Um, you, if you scroll down, there are people outside wearing like literally Civil War shirts. You can click on protesters outside wearing Civil War shirts. You've got you know a guy walking through the building with a Confederate flag. Um, you've got people like Michael Malice is tweeting out, you know. Every politician should be huddled in their home in fear, just like they wanted the rest of the country to be for months. This is at 3.23 p.m., right? This is right in the middle of things. Just like COVID. Yeah. Um, you've got Ali Alexander, the Stop the Steal movement leader guy, tweeting out, this is the first official day of the rebellion. Um, ben Shapiro did a video on this the day after, okay. so saying that, like, this is unacceptable, guys. This is an insurrection. This is unbelievable. Like, this is technically an insurrection. I can't believe you guys do this, right? Um, yeah. There's a, and then just, this is the only other image I'll make you click. I think that like, this is the perfect, I feel like this, like these four tweets are the perfect encapsulation of how people tweeted, uh, treated this afterwards. <laughs> uh, you can click this guy and just click like Kevin Sorbo and the way that he explains this. His first tweet is, it's happening. The next tweet is, history is being made. The next tweet is, to those storming the Capitol building, please be careful. Do not act like Antifa. Respect the police and know they are mostly on our side. They are simply trying to do their job. That's at 3.16 p.m. And then at 4 p.m., Antifa led the charge into the Capitol building dressed as Trump oh, supporters. No. Yeah. As soon as they realize that <laughs> they crazy. aren't winning, That's yeah, the so tone changes on everything. Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's, I could, there's like a million of these types of tweets I could do. But, um, yeah. Mm. Um, okay, yeah. I think picking out, I would say, like, um, so I've never even heard of who this fucking guy is. Picking Kevin out, like, Sorbo? Popular. Yeah, yeah, I've never heard oh, of this guy. He plays uh, Hercules. He's a, he's, he used to be more famous, but like, he's just a crazy dude. His wife is crazy. But yeah, yeah go ahead. I feel like picking out like popular conservative commentators who have done similar things, like Ben Shapiro, for example. I think that would be good. Like, sure. Yeah, just an actor. He's, not a... uh, he's just an actor, but he started to become more politically active. Or he's like a weird, like, he was like a weird mini Republican celebrity for a little bit, I think. Kind of like the there's my like pillow a genre, guy. Yeah, there's a genre of like celebrity type people who like eventually just become like Twitter people. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, it's just I don't know how seriously I I take it if he's not like trying to be a political voice. You know. Sure, it's not necessarily even like I think some political voices is good uh, are good, but I also think it's important to show like what the because again there's this claim that's always made that like well the people there had no idea they didn't know what was going on uh, the people there uh, they literally just wanted to um, they just thought it was like an ordinary protest like nobody had any idea you know what was happening or you know what was going to happen um, but but I, I think the people there had a pretty good understanding of of what they were there to do of like what the goal was. Um, like, like, I think like if uh, you want like, just as a real quick meme like you're just loading up this like fucking this stupid fucking video um, you can click cl yeah, click play and go through the ad real quick uh, what were you gonna say Tommy I was gonna say getting comments to people who are like in the building um, also rather mm -hmm. than like once again that actor guy would be good because this guy like I mean he is wrong but he's like some retard on Twitter like, sure people who are like there sure you know, seeing like their stuff which must be you no know, diamonds sure um, we know when you're done with the ad ready okay i'm not it's a long ad i got a 30 second ad fuck you okay get ad block <laughs> jesus christ you're like 50 years shut old. shut the fuck up <laughs> okay let me know when you're ready okay so starting at the beginning you don't have to speed it up it's a short one three two one go <laughs> ma'am what what happened to you i got mazed you got mazed by, by the police <laughs> And what happened? You were trying to go inside the yeah, Capitol? Yeah, I, I made it like a foot inside and they pushed me out and they maced me. What's your, what's your name? Where are you from? My name is 
Elizabeth. I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. And why did you want to go in? We're storming the Capitol. She got arrested, right? Like, I don't remember. But thank you. Did she even like names where she's from? <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashley. My social security number is this. I was <laughs> trying to commit a federal crime. Oh. Please do not arrest me. Cut the well, that's because she's a Fed, as we all know. She was personally That was one of the, the Antifa FBI. members they deployed in there, yeah. yeah. Yes. No Trump supporter would look like that. True. That's a big one. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Questions. Final questions I have for you fucking losers, okay? And then you can give me whatever bullshit. Okay. Cool. Of all the bullshit that we went through today, okay? This is a long time. Also, thank you for staying to the end. I appreciate all of you. You're very wonderful people, okay? Um so true from top to bottom nick what was the most surprising thing of all the shit today we went over that you were like wow i didn't know that that was pretty crazy so the one thing i didn't think that you were going to be able to i guess showcase is trump basically um having the intent associated with the actions that he i left the first 20 minutes realizing i was very wrong about that and then it was driven through my skull for the next four hours Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I come away from this conversation thinking that he knew exactly what he was doing the entire time he was doing it. Okay. Uh, Tommy, what about you? Um, yeah, definitely the, the intent of Trump because, uh, I mean, I knew, like, even from your previous coverage and from seeing other stuff, like, I knew, like, peripheral events around it. I knew, like, the loose string of, like, how it went. But mm -hmm. especially, like, I think the most powerful parts of it were um, hearing, like, First of all, the comparison between like what his advisors are telling him versus what he's saying in speeches, that was really good. Hearing about what happened with the, um, fuck, who's the uh, Jeffrey Clark guy, hearing about that was really important. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely, like Nick said, I really think the timeline of like what happened on January 6th from like what he was saying versus what the fuck was happening at the Capitol, his like testimony from AIDS, like refusal to condemn the violence, and then like afterwards saying that. Because I think a lot of the, the stuff I've heard from, like, older Trump voters, like, in my family and stuff like that is, like, oh, well, you know, what happened was really bad, but, like, Trump, you know, he didn't encourage it. He said it was, he he, he condemned the violence. You know, he never wanted to get like that. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, based on everything we've seen, like, he 1,000% wanted it to get like that, knew it would get like that, and was, like, you know, fine with it. And even after the fact, like, he wasn't, he's not even pissed off about it. He's, like, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and ultimately uh, his actions resulted in someone dying, you know, at least one. Sure. Uh, Warren the i forget what you call it the electoral college representatives when they bringing in that lawyer what what do you call that again um the false the electorate slates yeah slates mm -hmm. that i'd heard you speak about that but it's such that's going to be probably the most challenging portion as well because it's so detailed and a bit more complicated mm -hmm. it revolves around the electoral college or anything but it's it seems to be the most crucial component like that's where the story really starts to shift because up until that point i'm like okay i see how he genuinely believes this i can hear it in his voice it, you know it's just ignorance and but that's when the strategizing starts to turn the question i would still i still kind of have but is the way it was written out in that one paragraph where he brings in the lawyer and the lawyer sees a strategy where if we implement the strategy, it might, it was the wording that was a bit confusing mm -hmm. um, about where it, it could allow Trump a path if the court rules in his favor between this period and this period. Mm -hmm. And I read that paragraph a few times. I think you explained it better. I was just trying to, because it was so complicated, I kept reading that paragraph on sure. my own. So, but that, the, that the ultra area. the ultra charitable beyond good faith construction is that they were sending in an alternate set of uh, slate of electors um, in case they won a court battle, which would allow them to pick the other slates of electors just in case so that they wouldn't have to like certify votes or whatever or have electoral votes counter that the state legislature would change their mind on um, the big. The big example that conservatives will bring up when they want to argue this point is I think in 1984, 
I think Hawaii did something similar where they sent in two slates of electors. Greenwald tried this on me in a debate. Um, and they bring out that, like, well, uh, Hawaii sent in two slates of electors. The reason why Hawaii did that was because the count was, inc- I think it was like 130 vote difference in the state. So what the state legislature did was, well, it's close enough to trigger a recount. So what we're going to do is we're just going to send in both slates of electors just in case. And then when January 6th rolls around for the certification, you guys can pick the one that we basically ascertain is the correct one. The only difference between Hawaii that, well, I would say the key crucial difference is that that one was done on the up and up. Everybody knew it was going on. The state legislatures were involved. They certified. The governor gave the ascertainment to both sets of electorate slates. None of this was done like behind the scenes or in any kind of like weird spooky way. I feel like for the Trump stuff that if they wanted to say that like, hey, okay, like maybe we do in a court case, if you feel that strongly about it, go to the legislatures and say, hey, can we like do two sets of electorate slates just in case rather than kind of like all the shady shit they did. I feel like that Mm -hmm. shows worse intent. It's my feel on it. But um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Willie Mac, what do you got? Uh, I I agree with Warren. I think the most damning part is the electoral scheme i mm-hmm. think that's like the the biggest like thing that most people don't know about mm-hmm. um but since i knew about that i would say the next big thing and i all of us got interested at this point i think if you even go back and you uh, watch the stream is uh rosen said to trump that he needed to understand understand that the dog can't and won't snap his fingers to change the outcome of the election it doesn't work that way mm-hmm. and then trump responded saying I don't expect you to do that. Just say that the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me. Sure. I mean, that's pretty, I feel like that's like a huge thing. Like I had no fucking clue about. And Mm -hmm. then of course the uh, January 3rd Oval Office meeting uh, with, with Jeffrey, whatever his fucking name is. Yeah. Jeff, Uh, uh, Jeff, every single one of us has said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy that all that, a lot happened in a short period of time. Yeah. uh, Very. One of the frustrating things I think, um, for me and going through this is that for some of these things, you have to know like a lot of structural government stuff. Otherwise it like, doesn't seem like that big of a deal or it's hard. And there's like a lot of boring groundwork to kind of cover. Like, why would it be, why is it even a bad thing if Donald Trump talks to a guy in the department of justice? Like that's his department. Does it matter? Or like, why would it matter if somebody's asking to send a letter out or like it's, he's even at, like, it's, there's like a lot of groundwork to cover to, to even begin to lay out a lot of the stuff, which is kind of annoying. Um, even beyond that, I, I would guess the average person doesn't really know. Like, I mean, they know the electoral college exists, and they'll say they know like yeah. how it works. I don't think they really have an in-depth understanding of what that means. I didn't until about like a year much. and a half ago. Yeah, I didn't even understand it at all. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't know how much it's important for them to like fully understand it to a degree. You know, you just got to understand like there's electors, and then they're sending a false slate that is nothing. That's not supposed to be there at all, and they know. I mean, the the explanation helped me, but I don't know. Okay, sure. <laughs> Um, it, is there, what thing did you learn that this, this is kind of a repeat of last question kind of, but like, is there a particular thing you learned that changed your perspective on a thing? Um, Nick, I, I guess you can also, you can use their prior answer too, if you feel like, I'm just curious if there's like a particular thing where like, oh, I actually, I thought this, like a big perception, like I thought this happened, but oh, I didn't know that this is actually a thing, even if it wasn't like the most surprising thing you learned, but like a, a thing that changed a perspective on something. Yeah. Um, can you come back to me on this? Go for it. Turkey. I guess the biggest thing for me is that I was under the impression, this is kind of related to my first, well, mm-hmm. it's kind of a repeat, but um, I was under the impression that Trump had never wanted or supported the violence. Like, um, you know, I, I knew the false electors thing and all that about, you know, the election stuff, mm-hmm. but I was under the impression basically that he um, thought the election was fake. He wanted a protest, but he didn't uh, necessarily want a violent one. Like, he wasn't supportive of that. He wasn't cool with that. Mm-hmm. And um, let's say the timeline you built here definitely changed that. Gotcha. Um, I, got, I got it. I got it. Okay. Half the shit you listed as conspiracies was shit that I unironically thought was actually the case. What do you mean? Uh, like the example, um, they just let them walk right in. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That was a good point. Yeah, I didn't know that, but that was the first point of entry. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what? actually, I thought the first point of entry was uh, the cops opening the doors. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Okay. Um, Warren, what would be your thing? Or was that it? Or No, I mean, yeah, what I was saying before, but another, I can add on to that, another powerful moment was hearing, like, Don Jr., his comments like, in the when Trump was waiting to come out and tell them to simmer down, tell them to go home. Mm-hmm. Hearing, like, not just Don Jr., but hearing the lines, the quotes from multiple people, and also Pence, the whole Pence thing, I didn't 
know that that he kind of refused to leave that was a powerful moment gotcha um willie yeah definitely re respect for pence went the fuck up sure um yeah so i i came into it thinking like the jan 6 stuff in, in terms of the riot was really unimportant mm -hmm. um in terms of like the grand scheme of the whole thing mm -hmm. um and my opinions changed because I, I really think the timeline where it goes from Pence to McCarthy begging him, uh, like you got, again, you got Don Jr. begging him. Um, and then it turns into like, even after the riots, like cleared out, you got Giuliani's uh, voicemail saying, object to every state, give us time to get the legislators to uh, pull their votes. Mm -hmm. um, I think that puts into context, like how deliberate it, it was in a lot of ways from... Um, or malicious Don was being on that day specifically by weaponizing the uh, the whole January six riots. Okay. Um. <clears throat> okay, and then going through, um, if, what's like a thing where you like you just didn't give a fuck like uh, this whole part like if you were to, even if you were to tighten this up like I just don't want to hear anything about this or I thought it was boring or stupid or irrelevant to making any big case, Nick. Um. If anything, it was the section. I think we went a bit too deep into the Proud Boys and then the, um, what was it called? The Lamp Sum? I forgot the other group. The Oath Keepers. Oath Keepers, Oath Keepers yeah. Okay. I feel yeah, a little, little too much there. Uh, and honestly, I think some of the conspiratorial shit is valuable. I just don't know how valuable. Like the the, the Mike Epps stuff. That's his name, right? Uh, the Ray Epps. Yeah, I, I think it's valuable. The Ray Epps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, I, I don't know. You one, one time you told me that I should split a video and make a two-parter. I don't think that you're looking to make like a series of videos on this. But if you're making the truth about what happened on January 6th, the conspiracies of what happened on January 6th would be like a, a solid it part. It's own video. Almost. Yeah, cause that could, you could dive in and do another. That, that's its, its own document, basically. Sure. Um, Turkey. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, as far as the Proud Boy stuff, obviously it's important, but they're a relatively small part of the entire thing just because there were so many people there. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, by the time you get to the end, they read as like a footnote um, of the whole thing. Obviously, like the pipe bomb stuff is super. I, I had no idea there were any pipe bombs planted anywhere. I didn't know that at okay. all. Um, and that was really surprising. But I do think that like uh, s picking on these like smaller groups, I think not that they shouldn't be picked on, mm -hmm. but picking on these smaller groups, I think people will read that as like you conflating everybody's activity with them. Mm -hmm. When really what you should be showing, I think, is like everybody involved was fucked. Sure. Okay. Um, Warren. The lawsuit between Fox News and the voting machine company. Yeah. Um, because when I was listening to that part in the back of my mind, I'm just thinking, okay, but did, and I even asked that at one point, cause I was, I was wondering that very question. Like, did Trump, does this have anything to do directly with Trump? I know it's kind of relevant to it, but I feel like that could be something that you could shorten. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, okay, and then going through, is there any particular... Wait, oh no, wait, Willie Matt, go. Some piece you didn't give a um, fuck about here. I would say the uh, the mail-in ballot part with COVID. Like, you, you, we could slim that down to like a couple, like <laughs> like 30 seconds, you know? Okay. Um, with the Republicans are voting less, you know? And I, I agree with Nick when he says the... Um, you know, the Proud Boy leaders. I don't know how important that is. Okay. Um, okay. And then final question. Uh, what is some piece of information that you wish existed or that would move you in a direction that obviously, like, I'm trying to move you in or whatever? What do you think is, like, a big key piece that would help Nick? Um, what do you mean? Like, if we had, like, an all-seeing eye, we knew everything that was happening in the situation? Yeah, I guess, yeah. I mean, I don't think I can get much more of, a ver like, a verbal confession than... Um, that clip of him saying, you know, I don't, I don't want to say that I, uh, that I concede. I don't want to say that's over or whatever. I kind of got that already. I don't know. I'm pretty convinced. So like direct admission or quotes from people or from Trump, especially. Yeah. Nice, sure. Um, Turkey. Yeah. I'll just have to repeat Nick. Like basically the only thing that I would want to see is something you'll never get, which is Trump being like, it's an insurrection. I want it. I wanted it all to happen. I'm glad it happened. I would do it again. Like which you'll never get, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Warren. Yeah, anything that could neutralize my feelings of wondering whether of thinking that Trump is genuinely 
believes he's doing the right thing because it's going to like if you could neutralize like the intention of it or the uh the motive like if you could negate all questions around that it would make it it would be a sealed deal okay and then willie mac yeah i would say um like i i assume this will be part of your video i think you did a great job with a lot of this but is the selling the of the idea uh if he wins again that means like it's the end of democracy or it could be like this really bad thing it would be that i think that when i um this is like this would be like a fucking like a moby dick's book worth of like macro to convey but i think that when i look at everything i feel like january 6th to me was like the convergence of so many bad things happening um, in the overall cultural apparatus in terms of how we approach like politics and media, and then more specifically um, issues relating to the conservative or Republican Party, and then more specifically issues relating to Donald Trump. Like I feel like all of these huge things kind of like came together with um, January 6th. So for instance, things like uh, mistrust of institutions, right? I can't trust the election system. I can't trust the judges. I can't trust Congress. I can only trust the president. Um, things like lying deliberately in the media, Fox News and the Dominion lawsuit and Donald Trump and Giuliani. Things like uh, king making or emperorship, right? I'm not criminally uh, liable for anything. I should be able to decide if the election was right. I should be able to suspend the constitution. I am above these laws. Like all... Um, all of these types of things have like come together and I think that it's highly problematic and we have to take a step back. It's not necessarily this idea that like, hey, uh, if Donald Trump wins, it's going to be Hitler 2.0 or whatever, you know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. It's just more just like, holy shit. Um, it's frustrating that at the end of this, um, and we've already been here for like fucking six hours or seven hours, so I'm not going to make you watch a ton, but like when you listen to anybody talk about this today, um, and there's a ton more videos we could have watched about how crazy it was on the day of, uh, but when you listen to people talk about this today, they'll say things like, wow, Tucker Carlson released a video of like the lost footage and he's saying that like they, the cops just walked this guy through the, the building, nothing happened. Or Lauren Chen was on a Jubilee saying like, oh wow, a couple old people broke some buildings. Like who the fuck cares? But then like in the background of all of this, like the president of the United States is gaslighting half the country on the outcome of the election so that he can lead what's essentially a coup plus an insurrection to maintain power as president. That's fucking wild. Um, no, it is. Yeah. That, I think that's just kind of my, yeah. So yeah, that's I, in terms of what my goal is. I don't know. I don't want people to know that, like this shit was crazy, and people need to treat it as such. It was a fucking insane fucking event, and everything leading up to it was insane. And we have to do something different. We have to depart from whatever path we're on that got us here. Because holy fuck, yeah. I I agree, but your best way to prove that intent mm -hmm. would be you have to dip into the Supreme Court doc in the uh, election uh, electors scheme uh, indictment against them. That's the only way you can improve like he's still fucking crazy you know it's not just this one crazy thing happened mm -hmm. it's like this guy's still fucking nuts i, I think, guess i, I feel like the issue it, that... it, i feel like the issue real quick on that is that like all of i think that all of this works this is the hardest thing all of this works really well in totality but any individual piece is like eh, is it like really that bad yeah. like let's say that they asked some people you know and like these people thought they were electors and they just wanted to send some other votes like hey if they won voter fraud cases because they had a lot of them right well fuck maybe they could have chosen a different slate doesn't matter that much well you also have to know about all the court cases and you have to know about all the other pressure to get the state legislature to flip their vote like the brad uh raffensperger call and you have to know about what they want to do with pence and in order to know that you have to kind of know about the eca and like what the vice president do. and you kind of have to, like there's just like so many parts that you have to have to like fit it all in and then like once you have all of it done and you have all the context now like everything is like oh like when donald trump calls like an investigator in georgia to tell her that she's doing a great job to find voter fraud now it's like wait this call is highly inappropriate. The president of the United States should never be calling a state investigator like this. There's absolutely no reason for Trump to ever even mention to her anything, uh, especially because he's not even calling her as the president. He's calling her as a candidate. That's insane. And he only has his contact because people in the White House are giving it to him. Like, but yeah, but it takes so much to build up to it. That's like the really frustrating part. Sorry, God. Um, Turkey or um, Willie. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, obviously you know this, but there's just like, it took you six hours to explain this to us, right? Yeah. And this is also cutting out a ton of stuff, too. Yeah, God. I don't think you could explain it in like two, honestly. I don't think you could. Mm -hmm. Like may maybe if you really trim a lot. But then the problem is like, okay, let's say you do somehow manage to condense it into like two hours. You publish it. It's like the best For a video, edited, you most could. amazing. 
This is okay, but, okay, 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 but, okay, but in my head. Let me let me just go. Let me yeah. just go. Okay. Let's say let you do go, make the most go. perfect the most perfect expose of Donald Trump of all time. Okay, the most amazing video ever, right? It gets ten million views, twenty million views. Mm -hmm. Like that I don't I don't think any of this matters to Trump voters that much. So this is the one thing that I disagree on it, and I think I'd need like a, a more I need a more Republican leading panel, um, or maybe like other, like even people in Warren's position. I legitimately believe that a lot of people just don't know the extent of all of this. And and partially you could say because of how like the liberal media has covered him, because so many people have said like so many crazy unhinged things about Trump. Like if I heard uh, like Anderson Cooper or, um, you know, any like left leading like CNN person like say like, did you know that Donald Trump was going to fire his attorney general if he didn't lie for him? And that like, I could understand Trump would be like, that's probably bullshit. Like, I don't believe you. Like, fuck you. Um, I really don't think the information is there for a lot of people that's my guess i agree i mean i actually i don't know i i just don't think you gotta convert this to youtube shorts <laughs> maybe the okay maybe the average the average trump voter if you could somehow condense this into a missile and shoot it into their brain and it can immediately have the information that we just had and like mm -hmm. have the same understanding and everything then it could work but like once again it's so much to communicate and so, so much of that problem tom can be thrown away with tone if you make the video like a fun thing like here we're going to this crazy investigation of what really happened and then you have like the fucking music but, going like, all even, this shit the thing is like even if it's a fun tone like the actual uh, topic of what happened is like extremely dark you know what I no, mean? but dude the a you regular do, like, person, a true crime video where you got like the yeah, da, 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 you're, da, 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 you're da. never going to convince people that are like already like super like maga or whatever you can totally convince people that are just like a lot of regular Joes that just like view all this shit super casually. Isn't it crazy? They got whole states of those swing people, you know? Mm -hmm. But, but you also, can... if you do show this to them, like, I think, I think part of what Warren said earlier was true, which is like, people, voters are still going to see this and be like, okay, but I don't want to vote for Harris. Dude, that's there's, why Warren FK Jr. is in. I'm, I'm kidding. Never mind. But there's, yeah. there is that internal dialogue going on. So even if it doesn't shift their vote to Kamala, it's, it's still a worthy endeavor to undertake no i agree of course it's worth your yeah, goal so isn't really just to win votes for kamala it's more to shift like the moral landscape it sounds like is what destiny was describing it's like it's this culmination of all the like it was this perfect storm and the whole effort is to reveal that so it doesn't happen mm -hmm. again the other point would be like i noticed that going to what other people trump voters or whatnot think when you were doing the X space right after the assassination, it seems like with Lauren, not with Lauren Southern and people like every single person you asked about, cause yes, this is your cornerstone and you're like, you've become an expert on this topic, January 6th. Mm -hmm. And you, you asked them and none of them have any of this information. Yeah. So I think that is a data point that indicates that people don't. Yeah. It's not only that, but also like those people, even if they did have this, they don't want to communicate that because like that poses risk to their job. Their audience doesn't want to hear this. Yeah, sure, I'm not thinking about I, the I'm not even thinking about the content creators, just like the people. Because like I said, I do think I do. There's a huge problem with the content creators. That's a whole other issue that, unfortunately, yeah. But that's I, a different I think thing, it but. also helps though to like. I mean, this this is like a similar thing where if you go ahead and you make the video, and then when before you debate somebody, you're like, hey, watch this first before we debate. And this is a topic. This is my opinion on it. Mm -hmm. That catches people up on a lot of facts. You don't get into these conversations where you're like, "Well, do you know about this?" And they're like, "No, I got no idea about that." Because now, then you got to go through like the whole fucking thing of explaining it. But, but then, like, gotta... the problem with the the problem with that is like, none of those conservative guys want to talk to Destiny right now, or maybe I mean, he talk, he's now. talking to guys like every week though. Sure, but that big kind yeah, of creators like, yeah, but like, want to anymore, it's, it's yeah. like it's like it's like Rob Nor. It's not fucking Tim Pool, uh -huh. right? Tim Pool is like he's never gonna look at this ever, and he's like huge. I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe, but I, I do think that shit helps. It's like, uh, I don't know, it'd be like the equivalent of like, if he ever talks to Tim Pool in the future and he doesn't in invite him on, I feel like it would be like, uh, it'd be like when I debated Hassan and he's like, I want to debate your video, but I've never watched your video. Sure. You know, just, I feel like. Yeah, but like once helps. again, like, I'm not saying it's like a foregone conclusion or you shouldn't try. I'm just saying like. Tim Pool, the second, you know, Destiny challenges him to a debate, he's going to be like, well, you call for the president yeah. to die. And his and, audience and is like, true. Willie, you can't compare this to, like, you and Hassan because Hassan picked you out because he thought you were, like, the dumbest person in the room. I was, like, he, dude, and he still lost. Yeah, he still lost, exactly. <laughs> He's not going to, but, like, Tim Pool's not going to pick out Destiny. True. I Does feel like Tim what you'd Poole have to do Destiny? to, like, get... Uh, after yeah. the recent comments, I don't know how many conservatives are going to... True. I feel like on. the audience you would need this to see is, like, an audience that's, like, 
vaguely right leaning, but not it would just necessarily. Be no. Yeah, but okay, okay. The thing is, you say normies, but um, I don't think it's like easy to just like say, okay, here you go, normies. I feel like the audience you'd want is like Joe Rogan or something like that. Unironically, yeah, sure. that's like a wide enough berth. In... <laughs> you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I just think it needs to go viral. I think you're uh, getting a little too specific with it. True. Um, and it just needs to be a fun video that can go viral. If you just come off as like an angry lib in this thing, you're going to look psychotic. Yeah. True. No, I agree. You know, because the topic is really fucking cool. You got to get a video essay voice. Every video essay YouTuber changes their voice draft. Bo Blacks. And they read this. Yeah, yeah. dude. I was going to do Bo Blacks and... Uh, like, oh, it's sort of like he just gets in your ear, dude. It feels yeah. like you're getting like, fucked at the beginning of the Bo video. Blacks and It's a Gundam. I was going to have them both uh, guest star on my next... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, any final... I'll, I'm releasing you all. If you have to leave, you can leave. Any other final thoughts, questions, comments, anything? Um, um, good job. Shut yeah, up. Okay. Good shut really the fuck impressive. Up. Yeah. I feel like I just went on an EFAP for a movie I never read. I never, never read. Oh, fuck, I'm tired. I never watched. Nice. Ugh. I know you're still would... wearing a hat, Nick. Are you reconsidering? Yeah, dude. Are I'm you? voting for RFK Jr. Oh. Thank you for changing my mind. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Face. Okay. Uh, well, I love all of you. Thanks a lot for uh, hanging out. Yeah. I appreciate it. It was a, yeah, it was a, it was a slugfest. So I do this every day. I know you guys... Fun. Don't necessarily sit and listen to boring shit like this all the time. So thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Yeah. It was really interesting. Thanks for having me. You. I learned a lot. So thank you. Cool. All right. Peace, peace. Have fun. Thank you. See yeah, you guys let me know if I can ever help with it. Yeah, no problem. Peace. Bye. Jesus. Um, I feel like the, um, I feel like the Proud Boys Oath Keeper stuff is important to show a through line of like some type of like plan or activity, but, um, it's so much more that you have to explain to like make it relevant. I feel like cutting, like cutting all of that out saves so much bullshit because it's not like you have to learn so much to make you care for such like a, it's because they're not really, they're not like the stars of the day at all. And they're not even really necessary to maintain everything else. So cutting that out would be a time saver. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's other stuff I'll reconsider. Jesus. Oh, are you doing another focus group with different people? Um, I don't know. Damn, this is a long, the long ass thing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> the Hirschman Clark stuff is wacky and wild. The Elector's plot is pretty wacky and wild. Um. A lot of people thought, oh, I am glad I had the Proud Boy stuff in there, at least for that. Although I don't technically need anything for the initial break-in. People thought that the first people that got into the Capitol were just let in by cops. I think a lot of people think that. I wasn't 100% sure on that until I went down this road. Um, fuck, were the first people let in by cops? I don't know. Maybe some people broke in in some places. Some people, I did. I had to, but no, yeah. <clears throat> um... Statements that Trump's family makes are good too. Text to Mark Meadows with everybody like begging <laughs> to do something. I like that it seemed like people were getting this. I like this. This is the Trump intent thing. This is another thing that really requires like an overwhelming amount of like evidence and stories because I, I can understand how like a reasonable mind might think like did Trump like he could have thought the election was stolen like it's possible um, like and I get how he's but like I feel like when you hear enough you're like okay Jesus fuck like the DOJ shit the repeated lies the Raffensperger call 
the Giuliani admitting that he lied about the whole fucking Georgia shit. Like, I feel like seeing these and then hearing him repeat everything again on January 6th, hearing the same lies over and 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 over again. I feel like kind of hammer home, like, okay, something is happening here that's probably not okay. Um, Trump's behavior on the day of January 6th. I think the timeline part is really important. I'm glad I did the timeline thing. I feel like seeing everything laid out because it's very easy. Even when I like debate history, like people do this with like Israel Palestine, you're like, bro, like, uh, Obviously, the Palestinians, uh, obviously, it, it happened with, um, with uh, yeah, Ar Arabs, uh, of course, Arabs were uh, fighting against Jews. They had to fight back against the violence. And it's like, in what, in 1947? Or it, why, we're talking about like the 1920s right now, the 1930s. And people will be like, uh, oh, no, I was talking about uh, this event that happened like 10 years later. Like, the timeline is really important. You're saying that motivating factors were happening for things that happened like 10 years after the fact. This doesn't, this doesn't make any sense. People do the same thing for timelines on J6 where people will say things like, uh, yeah, Trump told them all to go home. And he was like, you know, yeah, he tweeted that out like pretty shortly thereafter, didn't he? Like, didn't he make that tweet like pretty soon after the violence? Like, no, it was hours it was hours after of people begging him to uh, stop. Um, yeah. The elector's plot is really hard because there's so much civics. God, there's so much civics in all of this. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot of civics just in doing the research for this. Um, but it's a lot and it's dry and it's boring. Uh, even explaining that Giuliani indictment, like, can you show me in this indictment where it says he lied? And it's like, okay, so when Giuliani says that for the purposes of this uh, indictment and for all other things, he's not, so what he's saying, like, it's even explaining like that one paragraph is like, oh, there's like so much bullshit. <laughs> you have to get there. Yeah. Hmm. Wait for the Mueller report. That's going to be a wild one. Yeah. I also think that there is a... Um, um, fuck, I don't remember what I was going to say. I just read a thing in the chat. Oh, uh, I do remember having um, more video stuff. I didn't watch a lot of videos with these guys because I was already like eating into so much time, right? What was it, like seven fucking hours um, of time? But like, I think having video footage is really important. Me reading this stuff, like I, I can see in my mind like what this looks like on video. Like there's so much stuff that I can see. Like having... Um, because having the quote of, of people saying, oh, Donald Trump said, I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Like if I had that and then the next three minutes were like all of these fucking quotes, I think that that video watching him speak, uh, you can even do like interstitials with uh, like Giuliani doing this like trial by combat shit, um, like to, Having this on video, this can't be read. None of, none of, I don't think a single quote can be read. None of these should be read. All of it should be presented in video format. All of it should be audio and video. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'll think. I'll think through things. Fuck. Fuck this. Cringe. What are we in August? <sighs> okay. Ask Richard Hanania to be a part of one of these. He likes you and you can speak to right wing. Oh, maybe, yeah. No, I think he, I feel like he is too primed to agree with me. Um, let's do, let's get the important stuff out of the way, okay? Oh, wait, hold on. Um, 
on another note, uh, if you want to do a canvassing event, sign up for a canvassing event. I think PV is managing another one. They've got a Reddit post up. Uh, join Progressive Victory's DNC Watch Party. Campaign season's here. We're kicking it off in style on the event or on the evening of August 22nd. Progressive Victory is hosting nationwide watch parties for the Democratic National Convention. We want you to be part. Wait, this is not for campaign. Sorry, hold on. Um. Oh, okay. I think these are for local watch parties. We want to sign up for any of this. Here you go. I think. Wait, right? My brain is fucking fried. Here we go. Um, I think we're also doing a some Wisconsin event. Am I supposed to link this to people? I'm linking this to people. I'm doing it. There you go. Click this. I'll do a better talk about of this later on as well. Here you go. Oh yeah, there's a sign up link on that as well for the um, Wisconsin event. Um, okay. Let me just focus here. <sighs> Babe, Buzz, Boo Boo, Daisy, Jasmine, Mickey, Dance, Yogi, Goof, Sting, Petunia, Flub, F Poppy, Lou, Gaff, and Pollinate. I don't even know half these words. Okay. Daisy, Poppy, Petunia. These are like flower things, right? Is a Jasmine a flower or a Pollinate? Pollinate? I don't... One of these is fucking... Ugh, please just say yes. Yes! I'm a god. Okay. Uh, okay, you messed up. You made a mistake. You made a goof. A gaff. A flub. A boo-boo? Okay. Um, oh, these are like cartoon animals. Uh, Mickey Mouse, Yogi Bear, Babe the Pig, and Buzz Lightyear? Are they Disney characters? Mickey M is... Toy Story was Pixar. That's kind of Disney, right? Buzz Lightyear, Mickey Mouse, Lou... Lo I don't know what the fuck this is. Yogi Bear, Babe... Is it Babe the Pig? Fuck! It's not. It's some other dumb shit. What is, like, Mary Lou or Susie Lou or some dumb shit? Just, please just give me this. Bee sting? Something sting? Pollen it? Dance? I, how was I one away on this and this, but not, wait, what the fuck? Wait, oh shit. Oh, these are things that bees do. Dance, sting, buzz, pollinate. Oh, okay, Whew, Jesus. First names of Yankees legends? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I knew that. Obviously, Babe Ruth, duh, Mickey, Rooney, the actor? I have no, okay. Things bees do. Jesus Christ. All right, I'm going to sleep. Good night. I love you guys. Stay safe. Ripper on a cappuccino, popcino, 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 Okay, be careful. Bye.